Welcome. This is 49D2 and the title is Interference Due to Paths of, paths of Different Length. Um, so let's have a look at this diagram. Uh, we have a source of wave energy, uh, maybe a speaker in sound, in, in air, or maybe a little, they're called dippers that cause ripples on the surface of water. It's a two-dimensional problem. The, the energy goes out in all directions. Um, we have two sources of energy, and we're considering a point here of interest. And we're going to say, what's going to happen at that point? Well, we know that the two waves are going to come along, and there's going to be superposition of the wave phenomenon at this point. And we'd like to find out what's, what's going to happen. Um, what's the phase difference? that we will see. Will it be a zero phase difference or a even number of half wavelengths or a even number of pi radians and will we get constructive interference or will it be uh, an odd number of half wavelengths path difference and an odd number of pi radians which will give us destructive interference. <clears throat> well what we say is consider two sources of in-phase waves. The waves from each source interfere uh, at point P. And the path difference is simply R1 minus R2, the long one minus the short one. If the path difference is an even number of half wavelengths, including zero, then we get constructive interference. If the path difference is an odd number of half wavelengths, then we get destructive interference. We did this, you know, in the uh, slides before. It's often useful to express the path difference in terms of phase difference phi between the two waves. And the reason for this is that if we want to take into account two sources of waves that are not in phase, we would describe that amount by which they're not in phase as a phase difference angle and therefore if we talk about the not being in phase as an angle and the path difference as wavelengths we have trouble comparing them but if we talk about it all as being in phase angle all in radians then we can add them together so we say it's often useful to express the path difference in terms of phase difference between the two waves. So there might be a phase difference between these two waves. And what we'd say is, we'd say, well, the phase angle for in phase now would be the path difference divided by the wavelength. That gives you the number of wavelengths difference. Rather than being in meters, you're now in numbers of wavelengths. And then if we want to take it into phase angle, for each wavelength, we multiply by 2 pi. So it's the difference in the two lengths divided by the wavelength multiplied by 2r. And what this does is it sets us up so we can say, if the wave sources are not in phase, we must consider the phase difference in addition to the path difference effects. So we get our difference in the distances divided by the wavelength multiplied by 2 pi so we get the path difference expressed in terms of uh, uh, radians and then we add to that the phase difference um, effect so we add this effect because of the speakers let's try an example and it'll fall into place so what we say is, uh, consider the interference of two sound sources that are out of phase by 0 0.73, 0 0.73 pi radians. Just to kind of show that if there's my wave from wave one, if you like, and I'm not 0.73, well, this is six pi radians. So 0.73 is a little bit out. So we can say, okay, 
then my next one will be just that little bit behind. So you see these two, these two waves, they're not quite lined up. That's what I'm kind of saying. Okay. So one crest will be slightly behind the other crest, or if you like, one high pressure wave will be slightly in front of the next, you know, high pressure wave, like the other one's high pressure wave. So we say, okay, uh, the distance between R1 and the source is, uh, and the receiver and P is 326 centimeters. The distance between R2 and the receiver is 252 centimeters and the wavelength is 34 centimeters. What's the phase difference at point P? So we say, well, our phase difference is equal to the difference between the two waves. I'm going to put out R1 minus R2. Doesn't matter. You're going to you're going to just find the positive value of it divided by the wavelength. So that gets me a, a ratio, and each wavelength has two pi radians in it. So now I'm in radians, and then I add the phase angle for my phase diff. And that's at my source. So this is going to equal, it's going to be 326 minus 252 over 34. I can do that because they're all in centimeters. Centimeters over centimeters is just a ratio. So I don't actually have to go to SI units. You could do if you wanted to. You just move the decimal point. Um, and then by 2 pi plus. And I've got to add on to this 0 0.73 pi. So this is going to equal. It's calculator time. So I can say 326 minus 252 enter divided by 34 enter times 2 enter I'm gonna leave the pi out of this for a second plus 0.73 I'm getting 508 and I left the pi's alone so it's 508 pi radians now, why leave the pi out of it? It's just that sometimes when you're dealing with some of these things and you have constants like pi, people tend to just leave them as a constant. You could simply have multiplied by pi in both sides, both parts, and you'd have got the answer in, in uh, as a, just a number of radians. So, we took into account the path difference, and we got it as a number of wavelengths by dividing by the wavelength. And then we converted wavelengths into radians by multiplying by 2 pi, because each radian, each pi, each wavelength is worth 2 pi radians. And then we added on the phase difference at the original two speakers. And there we have it.